In a previous Game Room Ideas video, I gave full details on how to make these miniature retail boxes for your Game Boy and other game cartridges. I found making them to be an easy and inexpensive project that could not only improve game organization and display, but open the door to learn how to make other crafty Game Room solutions as well. This was my most successful video to date and I'm very thankful for the thousands of views and thumbs up and, the most important part to me, the hundreds of people adding to the discourse in the comments. Because of their generosity, I've been given a unique opportunity to better serve my viewers. Even though this idea has generally been well received, I've learned that it's not the right solution for every collection. Several commenters, especially those with a large Game Boy game collection, uh, gently explain that they feel the effort required to make so many of these is too great an undertaking. With this feedback in mind, I've gone back to the drawing board to try to find even easier solutions. With the help of my contributors, I'm happy to present three new, super simple ideas to label and display your Game Boy games. First, allow me to explain the goal. These are solutions that make these Game Boy cartridges shelf ready. By that I mean they can be placed on a game shelf, library book style, and still be identifiable from the edge. For other open display ideas, please check out this My Life in Gaming video on the topic, or take a look at Discart's channel. He currently has at least five different Game Boy display videos, and he's got you covered with lots of ideas and product suggestions for the rest of your game room too. While this video is primarily focused on Game Boy games, keep in mind some of these same ideas will work for Game Boy Advance and other small format cartridges. I'll start with this dead simple recommendation from John Doe. He simply uses empty CD jewel cases to hold his Game Boy cartridges. I have a game cartridge and an empty jewel case. Open up the case and remove the layer with the disc spindle, and that's about it. The cartridge depth very closely matches the available case space, so the game is held safely in place. He said he uses a label maker to label the edges and boom, done. These can now fit in a media shelf or in dozens of different kinds of CD shelves, racks, or displays. With a bit of initiative, you could print a proper label insert instead of using a label maker. You could even take this a few steps further, but at a certain point I think your efforts would be better spent on simply using a DS style custom game case. This next idea comes courtesy of Shadow Driver V2. He uses a method very similar to the compact cassette cases we've seen before, but with a slight twist. Instead of the standard hard Norelco style cassette cases, he uses these soft poly cases. These single piece cases offer a couple of advantages. They are generally slightly less expensive than the hard cases. Although they are considered soft cases, they are plenty sturdy enough to house your Game Boy games, and these cases withstand shock damage better than hard cases. Hard cases tend to shatter under pressure. We'll prep this case by snipping off the cassette spindles to make room for the game. Labeling these cases is very simple too. We could use a simple label maker on this spine as well, but to make it a little nicer, let's try some custom printing. This style of box is one piece and fully semi-transparent, so this allows us to print a DVD case style insert with a front and back cover. Remember, the idea here is to keep it easy, so instead of creating our own cover, we can repurpose an existing one. Go to thecoverproject.net and find the DS case style custom sleeve art for the game you are using. We want to resize this art to fill these dimensions. We could keep the cover's original aspect ratio, but this doesn't quite fill the available space. This could still work by itself, or we could keep our required dimensions and fill the background with an analogous or complementary color. We can center this cover or space it higher, whatever your preference. Or it's easier to just unlock the aspect and resize the custom cover in both directions. This will deform the image, stretching it vertically, but then it fills all of the space in one step. I've printed this on cardstock. After cutting it out, line up the spine with the case and create shallow folds on your paper. Then work on fitting the insert to the inside of the case. The case I have has small closing clips here and here, so I'll need to slightly trim the art to fit properly. It really does look like a miniature DVD case, but with a Game Boy game inside. And now these can go on any kind of shelf or in a cassette storage case or display. This cover is not currently being held in place, but it can be affixed to the inside of the case. After adjusting the insert and its folds, you can hit it with a light coat of spray adhesive. If you allow this glue some drying time before mating the surfaces, it should make an impermanent tacky bond that can be repositioned or easily removed if necessary. Shadow Driver takes his cases a few steps further. 
He splits the insert into its three components, resizes them individually, and using a quality packing tape, he front laminates them. Then he adheres the parts to the outside of the case, showing off the print quality better than from inside the frosted case. These look very nice. Thank you very much for sharing your ideas. Next up is not only my favorite idea, but the one I'm actually using in my collection. Let me explain how I discovered it. When I'm looking for solutions to these game display problems, I can take inspirations from many places. I like to look through product catalogs and search the internet to see how others have solved similar problems. I might find that someone has found the perfect solution I was looking for, or that their idea can be adapted for my needs, or even inspire me to think about things in a new way. Researching for this video led me to two new discoveries. I came across the YouTube channel Old Game Box. They have produced a custom game box series of videos, starting with the Game Boy. Instead of relying on finding the right box scan, they have provided beautiful Photoshop templates that simplified the task to some relatively easy editing. Their video production is impeccable, and they have some great ideas, some I'll share momentarily. If you liked my mini game box video, I implore you to check out their playlist. Another search thankfully led me to Nathan DiOrio's blog. He had a brilliant idea that I'm adapting for my own collection. He created a set of inserts for the original protective Game Boy game cases that allow you to see the game title from the edge. This is the most space efficient method of labeling my Game Boy games possible and it's super easy too. I've made my own adaptations of his insert and I've linked to the project page in the description of this video. This would be a good project to get started learning some simple image editing. Any modern editor should be acceptable. Open one of the blank templates in your editor of choice. Before proceeding on this project, it's important to define our available options. This project starts with a couple of decisions to make. Base color and main image. First, we should choose the base color. This color will be the background color on both the side and top label. I am partial to using the primary color from the side of the game's original box. Using the bucket tool, I'll fill in the area with my chosen color. But this isn't the only option. One suggestion mentioned in the old game box videos is to color code your games. Consider coloring them based off of genre, publisher, or series. For instance, maybe you'll want the Kirby games to all be in pink and the DK games all yellow. While considering each of our variables, be mindful of how that decision will impact the rest of the games in your display. You'll notice two small crosses in the upper corners. We'll come back to those in a moment. In my box tutorial, several commenters were concerned about the high cost of the Bubble Jet Crude. Ink, that is. Black Gold. Technicolor T. <clears throat> if the high price of ink is a concern for you, printing in black and white is a very appropriate choice considering that we're labeling Game Boy games. You can leave your template mostly blank except for the spines and they will still serve their function. Otherwise, the next choice is for the main display image. This open area of the template will be seen facing out of the back of the cartridge case. We want to pick an image to fill the space from this corner to this corner only and avoid extending past these lines. For this example, I'll use the game's original front box art. Bring in your art on a new layer and look for the free resize or free transform tool. If you want to avoid stretching and distorting the box art, it won't fill all of the available space. Just like the cassette cover we just did, you can ignore these dead spaces or you can add other art or text. Alternatively, I'm going to fill all of the available space by slightly deforming the full cover art. Line up your art choice corner to corner as best as you can. Don't worry, the final printing will be of such a small size that any minor alignment flaws will be indistinguishable. The cover art is only one of many options. You can use just about anything you prefer. Interestingly, if you were to chop off this Game Boy logo sidebar, it fills the space almost exactly without deforming. Or, since this will show on the back side of the cartridge, the original box's back cover would be appropriate. You could use a screenshot, maybe of the title screen. You could just use the game's logo. You could use fan art or make or draw something yourself. Even a picture of the game cartridge works well. Use the opportunity to express your individuality. Next is arguably the most important part of this template, adding the game title to the flaps. This is what you'll see from two sides of the cases, and some advanced considerations should be taken on the best decision for your collection. The easiest and recommended way to do this is to use the text tools of your image editor. Pick a font that is readable at a small size and a contrasting color to your background. For longer game titles, you can abbreviate or use two lines. 
you can keep your game titles in a single format for an understated uniform display like Nintendo Switch cases, or you can go for a hodgepodge of different styles like Nintendo Switch cases. These two crosses on the template are intended to give a reference point for title placement. After filling in the text, be sure to cover the crosses with the background color. This should help keep things aligned for that nice uniform shelf appearance. The inclusion of the Nintendo logo does the same, but it also serves as a reminder of text orientation. I will be keeping my games in my really useful box, so when I thumb through, the tops are facing me. When Mr. Diorio made these for himself, his games were stored faced up in a stack, so his title orientation on the top of the case was the opposite of mine. Consider how you will be storing your cases and orient your template accordingly. Check the linked project page for more details. I always encourage personal customization. You might decide you don't need labels on two sides. If you plan to remove one anyway, you can crop it out before customizing and printing. Also, you don't have to be limited by these tutorial steps. It's your collection. Show it off the way you want to. For instance, I'm partial to using the game's title logos on the sides, but this comes with drawbacks. It doubles the time in editing, and I often had to do additional image searches just to find usable logos. Also, a nice long logo is going to remain legible quite small and from a distance, but for more stylized and squared logos, they become minuscule and indistinct when sized to fit the edge. I can edit these into something more horizontal, but that's quite a bit of effort to go through when using the text tool as a simpler alternative. Once these three components, color, image, and titles have been completed, it's time to print it out. I still have plenty of cardstock from my previous projects, but standard paper works just fine. The templates that I've linked below have added guidelines to assist with scoring the fold lines. After scoring the lines, just cut them out, fold the edges, and place it in the bottom of your game cases. You can add the spray glue to keep these in place, but mine fit pretty snugly without it. Look at what a difference it makes. Whether displayed on a shelf, in a drawer, or in a box, this is much more usable than plain gray edges. Don't be afraid to expand this with your own finishing touches. I want to thank my contributors again. Without them and their ideas, this video wouldn't have been possible. Even if these solutions aren't perfect for your situation, perhaps they can provide a spark to solve whatever collection issue you are facing. If so, please share your projects with us in the comments. That's a great way to show off your creativity while helping others. This has been the 14th video in my Game Room Ideas video series. I'm considering making follow-ups to my older videos with new thoughts and information. If you have any topics that you would like me to cover, let me know in the comments. No promises, but I'll see what I can do. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.